Hey folks and welcome to the Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast, episode 25, part 2. It is the 6th of October 2016 today. I'm your host Eva and I'm coming to you from my studio space in Perth, Scotland. This is a podcast about knitting novels and other cultural pursuits and if you like this video please give the like button a wee bit of love. Even better, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out in the future. You can find me all over the internet. I am Eva Christie Hand Knitting on Facebook and Tumblr. I am at Eva Knits on Twitter. And if you want to find me in Ravelry, my username is Pan Within. We've also got a group within Ravelry um, for the podcast. Just type in Eva Christie Hand Knitting onto the Groups tab and bingo, there you go. The group is something that you want to join if you want to be eligible to take part in our knit-alongs, crochet-alongs, whatever along it is, um, and to be eligible for prizes, so please do go and check that out. I'm hoping this is going to be a relatively short, shortish podcast today. Um, I am still dealing with the aftermath of the Perth Festival of Yarn, which was the first one ever and it took place just on Sunday there. I'm trying to catch up with all the admin, catch up with life. Josh and I have got a wedding at the weekend and I'll need to go and get the item to show you that I've been working on for that because I've got everything else here and forgotten that one, which is a bit where like where my head's at at the moment. Um, there will be a lot of swap packages and gifts being shown in this episode, so I'll give you fair warning of that because I know not everybody likes to, to see that sort of thing. Um, so, without further ado, let's talk a bit about the Glasgow Subway knit along first. Excuse me, I seem to have gone a bit croaky all of a sudden. I'm drinking a very special coffee today, but I'll get to that when we get to the swap packages. My goodness, excuse me, my croakiness. Um, okay, the Subway knit, the Glasgow Subway knit along. I had honestly, guys, plan to get everything up today for this episode and I just haven't had a chance. Um, to kind of put this in perspective, yesterday, Tuesday, was what, two days after the Perth Festival of Yarn and from when I switched on my tablet in the morning just to check my notifications and messages, um, I was still there an hour and a half later. <laughs> um, responding and I still haven't responded to them all so it just kind of gives you a flavour of what life continues to be like at the moment although it should calm down. After this weekend I fully expect it to calm down. So I can see the additions to the threads, I'll total everything up. I will get around to actually totalling up my my actual knitting within the last month. Um, it does feel like it's getting a bit out of hand but thanks for being with me on that one. If you watched part one you will have seen some of the yarn that's up for grabs as part of the present and at this stage guys we've only just got a few months left to go. If you honestly feel like we need an extension and I'm happy to extend this up to six months then please do let me know. It was an absolute mammoth cal and I just want people to have fun and enjoy it as much as possible. That's why we set it up. It, it was a bit of a revolutionary cal um, in terms of you know we weren't all it was themed, but we weren't all knitting like the same shawl pattern or the same sock pattern or knitting with a particular type of yarn. This was knitting your way virtually around the entire Glasgow subway system and yeah, it was always open open um, to be fluid and everything, so let me know your thoughts on that one please. The second knit along we've got to talk about, which was a knit along crochet along, was September's informal blanket blowout. I have drawn this morning using random.org and I took a screenshot just in case we have problems online. So here we go. Let's see if we can bring this up. We had nine entries on that. The rules were that you could have one entry per blanket and you just had to have worked on that blanket during September. Um, so just before I started recording I went on to random.org, there you go, you can see, see the date on it that was taken, so 5th of October 
Two and nine came up with number eight. Number eight is Linda, who is Whiskey Girl. So congratulations, Linda. Um, Linda's actually relatively local to me. I think she's maybe as much as 30 miles away up to the north. Um, her dear husband, David, um, runs Moulin Yarns and he was at the event on Saturday. Linda couldn't make it because she was working. So in a way, although it's completely random, it's quite nice that Linda's won. So I've got a little packet of mini skeins um, that I'll pull together and I'll drop them into Puller House so that David can pick them up and get them up the road to you, Linda. Congratulations! <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the other knit along I mentioned in the lab last podcast that actually started on Saturday and is running for this month alone is one that I'm running alongside... Sorry, my hands are cold. I'm just going to pop these mittens on, which I'll show you soon as well. Um, yeah, this one started on the 1st of first of October, which is Saturday. I'm running it alongside the beautiful, the lovely Carolyn of The Next Beautiful Thing. So Oktoberfest is exactly what it says in the tin. No works in progress, please. And we want to see socks. No limit to how many pairs of socks you can do within the month of October. There will be finished item threads um, that will go up, so there'll be banter threads in each group. There will be finished object threads in each group. Usual terms and conditions apply, guys. If you want to take part, you must have subscribed to the podcasts. And that's both mine and Carolyn. And you can enter in both groups, but you must have subscribed to both podcasts and be members of both Ravelry groups. Or alternatively, if you just want to... Um, participate in one group, one podcast, and you must be subscribed to those ones. That's the fairness of it. It's it's not not asking a huge amount. Um, I've got a ball of sock yarn put aside, which I'll show you in the next episode, and I know that Carolyn has one as well. Um, so good luck, guys. Um, I know that a few of you have already started um, putting comments up in the the banter thread in mine, and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. So. Let's move on to gifts, shall we? I'm going to have to take my mittens off again. I was extremely lucky and fortunate to receive, first of all, a gift all the way from Australia, which came the day before the festival, so it was perfect timing. It, it gave me a lift. It really, They really were virtual hugs that, that had arrived in the post. So a box from Australia and then a swap package from Iceland and I saw David and somebody else at the Yarn Festival and they gave me little gifts as well. So this section will probably, at a guesstimate, take up to maybe 10 minutes so if you don't like this you may want to just kind of um, scroll forward for a little while. I know not everybody likes to, to see stack a, a, a stash acquisitions and all the rest of it but um, some people do, and I think it's it's quite nice to, to share that love on screen with you guys. So I'm going to be darting back and forth off screen to pick everything up because it's all in boxes and bags around me. Um, so if you bear with me, that would be grand. So first up is the box from Australia, which came from Shara of the Shara Made podcast. Now, Shara had gotten in touch because she knew I had, well, Josh and I had recently moved house and she said I'd like to send you a little housewarming gift. Um, Shara's completely overwhelmed me with generosity. This is not a little gift, folks, so if you are embarrassed by that sort of thing, then you may want to look away. But honestly, it's so beautiful, it's so thoughtful, it's so heartfelt, um, I would like to show. So first up, look, she decorated she decorated the envelope that she sent with all these stars, which was great. And I won't show you the message that she's she's put in. She has said that it's no obligation. It was just um, it was just you know simply to show her appreciation of my podcast and the joy it brings her. And I thought that was that was extremely extremely sweet. But I won't divulge any other details from the card. But look, look at this. Josh loved this. He does absolutely love little koalas. It was amazing. And um, there's a further koala illustration inside, which I won't show you. 
because she may then be able to see what, what Sharon has written. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant card. Um, what I'm drinking at the minute came from Shara's gift. Chum Creek Coffee Company, how <laughs> brilliant! And it's um, printed with all the details of it, it just looks so vintage and proper and oh, love it. Now it's been cracked open already because well, Sunday at the Arm Festival had been a massive day for Josh and I. Josh treated me to Chinese, which is my favourite sort of food, um, afterwards. And once we were trying to sort of wind down, and, and I know it might sound a bit weird to be having um, caffeine um, as a calm down, but we just thought for a bit of warmth and a bit of comfort, um, and with it getting a bit nippier here as well in the weather, we'd have a coffee and I suggested, do you know what, should I just crack open the coffee that that Shara sent us, um, we'll have some of that, and it, it was lovely. It was lovely, it's so thoughtful Shara, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and that's what I'm drinking at the moment as well. Shara also sent me a copy of, I think it's her favourite novel, if not one of her favourites. And this is amazing, I love the vintage editions of Penguin and we sometimes get them here. But the publishing system, even though it's the same company, Penguin, in, in Australia, is totally different. So this is an Australian edition copy as well of one of the great Australian novels. So completely, completely blown away by that. Um, there's a bag, a lovely big black tote bag, which has great Australian novels on them and I'm quite chuffed to say that I'm aware of at least half of these already. Um, I either have them on my shelf or yeah I either have them on my shelf or I've, I've read them and I thought that was that was great and some of them I didn't even realise were Australian authors so I'll consider myself educated there. This made me laugh because of the, what I've been doing recently and sending people dairy milk in the post. This is Australian dairy milk. Um, so we'll see how this, this is a Freddo, Freddo bar, which is a little frog. So we'll see how that compares to the UK one. And then there's a little mini poppets from Quint Country Wide Yarns, which is, appears to be New Zealand which will go on my blanket. That's lovely. There was... There's loads of bits and pieces in here. There's a magnetic bookmark. There were some tea bags. There's some wool wash. And lip balm from Sierra Bees. Which is fabulous and there's a, this is cute look she's got her own stickers Shara May podcast and like even the wee coconut buttons on the back the detailing's just beautiful Shara just oh and in here are some stitch markers so we've got toadstool and Sheepy, Mr. Fox, can't forget Mr. Fox, and there's a little moth as well which is really cute. And there's one more item, I mean just jeez, jeez oh Shara. i just wind that up because I don't want to lose them. This is a skein of Shara's own hand dyed. So there's our label. Guys, go check it out if you aren't already. This is 20% New Zealand Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. There's 365 metres to the 100 grams and hand dyed in the Yarra Valley. This is mulled wine. And it is, sorry we're going to start getting some sunlight through here aren't we? But still, 
it's not blowing out too much. You can pick up the colours. They're just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Shara. Oh, feel very, very lucky and blessed. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the parcel that came from Iceland next, which is also down here. This, <laughs> this parcel is from Ingerosa of the Knitting Diaries. Sorry, I had to think about that for a minute. That's dreadful from the Knitting Diaries podcast. And Inga Rose is based in Iceland, like I said. And we had done a, a swap package a little while ago and this was my one coming through. And Inga explained the reasons why there was a bit of a delay between me sending mine to her and hers to mine. And to be honest, I didn't really think of it as a delay. Um, we, we didn't agree on a time scale in which to send them and life gets in the way and we know each other enough and care about each other enough to go, do you know what, it's, it's, that's not even relevant, you know, there's things in life that are, that have got to take priority and a swap package is not one of them because there's enough, enough stress about in the world. Sorry, crinkling. So there were some chocolate, there were two little um, yellow packaged candies that had little penguins on them and they are gone, they had those. I had those in the run up to the festival because I could have done with a wee bit of sugar the day before. Um, and they were like a chocolate, chocolate fudge with licorice in them. They were bizarre, but they were amazing, amazing bizarre. And I've got these chocolate bars as well. So there's one with salted caramel and there's one with the Oreos in them as well. So now I've shown them I can properly crack in. <laughs> there was a postcard. Oh, sorry, it's glare. Postcard to the cow. There was a, or there is, a little booklet and it's actually got Icelandic writing on it. So that is so, so cute. Um, I think I'll have to keep that one in this project bag. There were some minis, which I haven't fully opened up to find out what they are, but I think maybe, well, I know that there's a Hedgehog Fibres one in here, but I think some of these might even have some of um, Inga Rose's hand dyed, I'm not 100% sure. So there's there's minis from a blanket. And then, this is hilarious, I love this. It's the ability to see elves. It's chewing gum. I just thought that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I don't really want to open this, I just want to have it on display. Because <laughs> it is, it's so funny. And then Inga sent me this as well. This is some of her hand dyed. So she has her own Etsy shop, which you should totally go and check out, which is Yarn from the Shire, which I think is brilliant anyway, having a cat called Smeagol and completely getting the reference. Um, this is the colourway moss and the base is, I'm sorry in case I butcher it, Inga Rosa, um, it's Silja fingering which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 metres to 100 grams and it is really smooshy. And out of all of, um, out of all of Inga Rose's hand eye yarns, if I was given full reign and full choice of which one I would go for, it would be this one. And I think the light is kind of not showing up to its best colours here, but it is, it's proper chartreuse green. It, it is me, it's perfect, and I just, I absolutely adore it. So, those were the biggies. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness, sorry, it's because I had these out and I've been using them. This also came in Inga's package, um, Inga Rose's package, and I'm going to put them on. And I cried. I properly, properly cried. I was feeling emotional anyway because Shara's package had turned up. This one had turned up an hour later. I was getting ready for the yarn festival. I was a bit all over the place. I was rescaining yarn. I was stressing that some hadn't dried out yet. And Inga's 
Inga's letter on the back of her postcard really showed me that she, when she watches my podcast, she is, is properly listening. She feels part of it and she obviously feels an affinity with me. And she remembered me talking about my Reynolds phenomena, um, which affects my circulation. I've got very, very poor circulation and I, I bitterly feel the cold um, to the point that up to don't think it happened last year, it was the year before that, but I used to have to go into hospital um, every winter for, for three days. I would travel back and forth most, most of the time, I wouldn't go in for the three days, but I ha would have a pick line inserted into my bicep and I would be given a, a drug infusion for up to 10 hours a day for three consecutive days um, to help thin my blood, to help, help thin it, to try and get my circulation working uh, a bit better and to make me feel a bit warmer and, and such and and all the other sort of side effects of that can well all the other effects that that can cause as well. Um, but even that stopped working, all the drugs have stopped working, so I've just been left with with nothing to help. And I do in my feet and my hands in particular, I feel it, but my entire core temperature goes down. But Inga had remembered me talking about having cold hands all the time, and so she sent me these and she told me what wool it is because it is an Icelandic wool and I thought it was one of the I wanted to say it's plotolopi or one of the lopi um, fibres and yarns but it's it's not I think she said it was ice ice band she may have put it on this I know that she sent me a message afterwards to kind of say um, no no, it's not in the card and it is in the message, but I'm not going to stop the podcast to, to go and grab that. But these are just wonderful. And then I read on, Inga Rose didn't make these. She asked her mum to make them for me. And it's her mum's own pattern. Just, just look at them, they're amazing. And I've been wearing these since they arrived on, on Saturday because they are just so, so warm and, and like I say, I cried and I couldn't believe that you'd, you'd asked your mum to make me a special pair of Icelandic mittens. Amazing, amazing. Um, sorry, I can't believe I almost missed those. Right, um, now, when we were at the Festival of Yarn, lovely lovely lady turned up and I can't remember her real name at the moment for the absolute life of me but she her Ravelry name is Little Bush Baby and Little Bush Baby um, has organised events and, and such I believe similar to the one I was running on Sunday and she knew that I wouldn't have a minute to myself and I'd probably be struggling to even try and get a bite of a sandwich or something she'd been baking and she brought me a Tupperware box, which I didn't get the chance to open until I got home. Um, but it was full of tablets. And thank you, thank you so much, because I've really been enjoying it since I got home. Tablet, for those who are not Scottish or are uninitiated, is, is basically, um, it's butter and it's condensed milk and it's sugar. And then it's all heated in a pan to a certain, certain temperature and it's boiled up and then it's it's put in a baking tray and um, you kind of cut it into to slabs and things and it's it's very difficult to actually get it to the right consistency and to to not burn it but it's basically sugar and it's amazing <laughs> and I was so touched because it was so so sweet for you for you to think of me like that so thank you and David David Rakes, who is this boy, who was one of my vendors at the event, had been putting together a wee package from a studio as well. So he gave me some bits and bobs when I met him in Perth. So he gave me his coaster, a sheep on it, at one pearl one, which is fabulous. And he made me a couple of items as well. So he made me this cushion. Which has got little bird houses and birds and things on it. And there's a brand new cushion filling in it. So I'm going to have to 
get a little bit of velcro because it's still a bit fluffy. But there's the back as well, so it's got fabric on the back that matches really, really well. And then he made me this, which I will have to get up on the wall. Um, but the the saga of the studio continues, and we now can't at all get the carpet that I wanted that would match the colour of the balls. Can't get it from anywhere. So guess what, guys? As soon as I can't even get an alternative that's anyway close, I am having to repaint the walls. And we won't talk about that because I will cry. But anyway, David made me this. Look, it's my name <laughs> to get this up in the back of the podcast. So that, that's just brilliant, David. Thank you. You never get my name on anything at all. <laughs> so very, very touched by that. Now, I am going to pause here for two seconds because I have left one of my works in progress downstairs because I've been working on it this morning and I want to share it with you. So, two seconds. And we're back. So, first up I shall show you my blanket and I only got one square done in this past week, which is this one here. Now this came out of my swap package um, from Lily of Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. This is the Ultra Sock by Marley Thorn Hand Eye Jarns and the colour is Black Squirrel. And it's brilliant, it's got a lovely drape to it so we've added that one in. And I've got a few few sort of um yeah a few projects that need to get done now with um a time limit on them. That's not quite the quite the phrase I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. Deadline, deadline knitting to do. Um so my blanket's gonna have to go in a slight time out, which I'm gutted about because I've got a lovely, lovely mini, so it's still loads of lovely minis that I want to, to kind of crack on and, and do. But we've got Socktoberfest running, I've got my mother-in-law's socks to do for her birthday towards the end of October. Um, I've got a hat to do for um, somebody whose sister is terminally ill. Um, so that's obviously a biggie. Um, she's been undergoing chemo and has lost all her hair and it's getting cold. So I've got an alpaca hat to knit for her. And then I've been asked to do a couple of pairs of socks and things as well so it's it's all go and I've got Christmas knitting coming so goodness only knows and I'll get to knit my new stash but it's always something to look forward to isn't it. Now this is sock two from pair seven and we won't talk about this yarn because I've spoken about this yarn in other previous podcasts. This is stitch marker to show you where I've been before so I worked all my way down the heel and I've just started decreasing for toe shaping there as well. So there's not much left to go on this one. What else have we got? Yes, I've got the other work in progress which is also deadline, it's deadline stitching ahead of Saturday and I'm slightly miffed because this is a free cross stitch pattern I was using online um, from an Italian designer and I stupidly just looked at the chart and thought oh well the counting that they've done down the side will be the exact sort of length and there's you know there's a good amount of size you know well when they're doing cross stitch patterns and they normally kind of centre it a bit and it looked like there was a good bit of, of allowance on either side and I thought well it looks like there's a good bit of fabric allowance on the side, waste fabric allowance. No, no, they've misplaced the numbers and I really should have counted a bit better than I actually did and not just take it for granted. I should be okay um, because I've done enough cross stitch in my time um, to not end up freeing edges and, and being careful and such. But this is um, a card that I'm stitching for the wedding on Saturday, so there's nothing like a bit of pressure, especially as I'm away to go and get my hair coloured this afternoon and everything. And I've still got to go and get shoes and a bag for my outfit. Um, 
Purple's the colours, one of the colours from the wedding. I'm using a precious metal effect, metallic thread on the black, which really isn't just picking up as well as it should do on screen. Um, but Lily, thank you again for your very thoughtful package where you put that additional gift with all the embroidery floss and, and silks and things in it because this purple's actually come from you. And the reason that I'm using purple is that I believe the, the bride herself um, made the wedding invitations, or if she hasn't, she's asked somebody to make them so that all the invitations were handmade. Um, there were the purples, there was purples and greens on it, and then I discovered that the purple was one of the colours of the wedding, because I had initially been asked by the groom to hand knit ties for them, and I couldn't get the right purple yarn to go to go with their outfit, so unfortunately I had to decline. I was absolutely gutted about that, but it was so lovely to, to be asked, but I thought it would be a nice touch to actually make the card and still have some sort of involvement in that, so... That's where all the time's going at the minute that I'm not recording and doing other stuff. Um, okay, so I've shown you my ongoing projects. I'm still reading Les Mis. Um, I haven't done the percentage of it this morning. <coughs> Excuse me before coming on camera. But yeah, I'm still, still plodding on. There's still a good amount to go. I'm not even halfway through it yet. But I am still enjoying it. Um, as for watching, I watched Casualty, series 31, episode 6. What have I been listening to? I've been listening to a lot of disco music. Um, guilty Pleasures, I'll admit to them. It's been brilliant music for keeping me energised, sort of um, disco and electronica, <laughs> while I was trying to get ready for the, the festival. Um, really sort of upbeat, up-tempo, the sort of music that you can't listen to with, without a big cheesy grin on your face and tapping your feet or wiggling your bum or doing whatever it is you do. Um, so that that was good, but I'm not going to give you actual de details of songs, um, just in case I totally, totally shame myself. Um, so I'd like to, to give out a bit of pod love before I sign off for today and I'll upload this overnight. So pod love in particular goes to well, do you know what? It goes to all my clan, my Scottish podcasting clan, and as an extension of that includes Susan of The One More Row, it includes Carolyn of The Next Beautiful Thing, it includes Lily, who's the Ladybug Lily of Ladybug Laboratory podcast, it includes Inga Rose of um, Knitting Diaries, it includes all of you guys, and I've probably missed out folk that really, it really does include and extends to um, as well as all the Scottish podcasters, but in particular this week, pod love to Beard Chiel, um, John, who who travelled from Thurso down to Perth um, with his lovely wife Janet um, to regale us with all their stories, um, to you know to keep us going, to to come and to if you haven't seen his podcast yet, guys, if you tune into episode five, which is entitled Perth Festival of Yarn. I think if you start watching it about 27 minutes in, you will see the footage that he took of the festival. Um, he got some interviews with some of us podcasters. He managed to secure um, a few interviews with some of the vendors. There were about 16 vendors um, and it was just so busy that he, he couldn't get to them all. And I didn't realise that he'd been interviewing vendors. I knew he tried to get some of the podcasters. So that was bizarre and he's, he interviewed some of the, the attendees and then at the end of the podcast, and it's a lengthy one, it's almost a full hour and a half, there's um, a photographic montage as well of the day and I didn't really get much of a chance to, to go and enjoy it and to soak it up as much as I, I would have liked to and that's a positive actually that it was that busy and it was such a success for everyone. But I was almost watching it as a spectator and I was watching it last night when I really should have been podcasting and, and that's why I didn't and I felt quite emotional and quite humbled watching it back. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, John, because essentially I've now got... Um, yeah, I've not photographic, but I, I do have some footage that I, I can look back on of, of my day and on how the event went and I really really do appreciate that so thank you, thank you very very much. And Podlove as well, 
with added dollops of pressure now, um, Leela, Lily Spencer Knits Socks, who has taken a bit of a sabbatical from podcasting and knitting, who I know is going to get back on it this week. Go give Leela a... Leela, Leela, sorry, I always, always end up pronouncing it wrong. Um, go give her a bit of love, go check out her podcast and and you know what guys, go go and support her because it's not an easy thing to do. Yes, when you're in a situation like this you're just talking to a blank camera but there has been quite a lot of negativity within the podcasting community. Um, towards I think in particular some of the Scottish podcasts, some of them have had changes, some of them have had problems with some of the recording. Um, it's some sometimes these things are unavoidable and I'm not saying that everybody's like this but sometimes there can be a bit of negativity and we are just doing this for fun we don't get any revenue from it and yeah so just just be kind and support one another now before I finish for the day I was gonna say this is it would you like to see some more my hand dyed yarns Shall I go and get some of my full size skeins to show you? Okay, guess, give us two seconds. Okay, I've just grabbed a handful and it's just to, to give you an idea of what I've been up to with my dyeing. So I've got some mini skeins here as well. These are all my Smeagol base, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. My label, if you didn't know what it's called, is Melted Mocklet Dye Works. And the minis, which I call kittens, because that's what small cats are, um, don't have any colourway names at the moment, and all my dyeing is a one-off as I, I learn about different dyeing techniques and how to, to replicate things. So that's the Smeagol base. Um, I've got a handful here. Some of these are a mystery yarns because the first lot that got tied up um, went outside and then the rain started and we desperately, Josh and I desperately tried to get everything in and things didn't get separated up correctly so we knew that both the skeins could only be two different bases but the and they were all 365 metres to the 100 grams but we couldn't tell you whether it was 100% Blueface Leicester which is my Martha, Martha Bean base or whether it was my Peter Cat base, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. So these got labelled up as mystery, um, mystery yarns. But yeah, here we go. I've got these ones here. These are Lord Summer Isle and Lord Summer Isle 2 because they weren't exactly in the same dye pot, so there is a bit. Um, Bit of a difference between them and they're on my mystery base. All my names tend to be at the minute um, named, they seem to be inspired by films or um, songs or all that sort of stuff. This one here is on my Martha Bean base, it's 100% superwash blue face Leicester. This is Someday My Prince Will Come Again. This one here um, is on Peter Cat. This is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And this is What Were the Skies Like When You Were Young? This one is Boys and Girls. This is also on Peter Cat. And this is Through Vincent's Eyes, which is on Martha Bean, which is 100% Superwash Blue Face Leicester. And I do have more aside, but I'm not going to show them all to you. And like I'd said already, that I don't want to use my podcast for shop updates. Um, that may change depending on the feedback I get, but I'm not particularly comfortable with that setup. Um, but I do know that some people have been asking, you know, how, how did your own launch your own yarns and things go? There will be an Etsy shop going up in the near future, but if you do like any of these, um, the minis are £4 each. I've got a huge selection of them. I will get them all properly photographed and at least up on my Facebook page, Eva Christie Hand Knitting. 
Um, I will do the same with my full skeins. But if there is anything, the yeah, did I say the minis? The, the kittens are four pounds. These full skeins, pardon me, are sixteen pounds each, and I do have some sock blanks that have been wound back down as well, um, and they come different bases and and different prices, but. If there's anything that you've seen and you would like, um, if you want to send me a message through Ravelry or through Facebook or whatever, um, we can arrange payment through PayPal in the meantime while I'm trying to get my Etsy shop put up. Anyway, all that remains really is for me to, to wish you happiness. So I wish you happiness, happy knitting, spitty, ha happy knitting, happy spitting, happy stitching, happy whatever it is you do. Take care of each other, be kind to each other, and I will see you again in probably about another week's time. Bye-bye.